And so with that, I'm thrilled to have Nancy Goring join us from uh, 451 Research to share her perspective on what the industry is seeing. Nancy? Thanks. Thank Thanks for inviting me. So I'm going to talk for a few minutes about what's all the buzz um, behind machine learning and IT ops. Um, and a lot of it comes down to the increasing complexity of the modern IT environment, just like David touched on. So instead of this traditional monolith, you've got um, many more moving pieces. You've got um, containers. You may have a serverless environment. You might be using an orchestration tool for your containers. And then you've got your legacy gear also. So this is creating a much more challenging environment, particularly when it comes to IT operations and ensuring that your applications are performing as the best they can. So just to sort of drive home or sort of demonstrate this growing complexity, let's look just at containers. So these are some obviously very large environments. These are big um, web scale businesses. But if you think of, say, Google, which in the middle of last year said they were launching 4 billion new containers every week. Week. Traditionally, you would want to collect some bit of data um, each time one of those containers spins up and when it spins down. You might want to collect some other metrics um, about the performance of that container while it's running. So right there within one week, that's an enormous volume of data um, that you would traditionally want to collect in order to troubleshoot when you have performance problems. So not only is that it, uh, an enormous volume of data that you have to handle, it begins to raise new questions about what exactly you should be collecting. What do you want to collect? Do you need to know uh, about each one of those containers if you're spinning up 4 billion every week? Or should you be relying on automation or orchestration tools to manage that for you and, and, and decrease that complexity a bit? So, and that's just containers, right? So if you're using serverless or um, a whole bunch of other technologies that are increasingly common in modern organizations, that just really increases the complexity even more. So against that backdrop, the pressure to ensure uh, really top performance is only growing. So this is actually a really a relatively old quote um, maybe some of you have seen, but I think it really drives home how important performance is. So this is a guy who uh, created Amazon's recommendations engine. And he once said that every 100 milliseconds delay costs 1% of sales. So when you're Amazon, that's potentially an enormous amount of money. But even if you're not, any organization doesn't want to lose 1% of sales because their application is, is slow because there's more latency than it should have. So latency is an issue. People want it to drive the performance of their application because it's impacting the bottom line. Outages, obviously, um, are also a huge problem. So it's very expensive. So this is from a study that the Uptime Institute did where they asked organizations how much downtime costs. And nearly 50% said that downtime incidents cost more than $100,000. Um, and actually, 26% said that a downtime incident costs between $100,000 and $500,000. So, so downtime is really expensive. Latency is expensive. And at the same time, organizations are being asked to do more with less. So this was a, a recent study we did um, when we were particularly talking to IT infrastructure teams. And we asked, about the their amount of work, how the their amount of work had changed over the last year. Uh, the majority said that it had gone up. We then asked them how the size of their team, what their staffing, how their staffing had changed over the past year. Most had stayed the same. Uh, a fair number had actually decreased. So you've got all of these these challenges with your complex systems. You've got pressure to for your applications to perform really well, and yet your team is potentially shrinking and certainly not growing. So, um, so what do you do? And this, I would say, is, is really creating the environment for machine learning. And I think that machine learning can have some really immediate uh, positive impacts if you're in this type of environment. And what's, I think, really interesting is that it's, we're beginning to see that once you have machine learning in place, it actually opens the door for some other really interesting opportunities around things like automation and getting better business insights. So 
on the more basic level, once you've got uh, a machine learning driven tool in place in your IT operations organization, you can get some really um, immediate benefits. So for instance, you might be able to begin discovering problems in advance so that you can fix them before they actually occur. Um, you can begin to get better event correlation, which solves a lot of the headaches that I hear people complain about around alert fatigue and sort of drowning in alerts. So if you're able to intelligently correlate uh, events so that you can understand that this huge volume of alerts and events coming in are actually all related to a single incident, then you actually also open the door for uh, your tool to be able to help you with root cause identification, right? So if you're able to understand that this volume of events and alerts that's happening are all related, then you can better understand which one actually indicates the problem so that you can quickly solve it. Um, but once you've got this in place, uh, you have the opportunity to do some really interesting things like automation. So automation is this theme that people in IT ops have been talking about for years. And there's been a lot of fear. There's been some reluctance to embrace automation. Um, there's, there's this sort of perennial concern that you're going to uh, embrace automation and you're going to accidentally kick off some sort of action that's going to make the problem worse or actually create new problems. But if you've got these machine learning tools in place that are intelligently and accurately diagnosing a problem, then you can much more smartly kick off an, an automated response that can solve a problem for you and allow you to do more with less. And this is def <clears throat> excuse me, definitely something that teams are looking for. So we asked um, IT infrastructure teams about their preferred approach to management and their top response was automation. So um, obviously teams really want to embrace automation. It's just been challenging to do so in a way that they can be confident that it's actually going to, to solve the problem and help them out. So. You've got machine learning in place. Um, there's a number of really clear benefits, right? So one is problems get solved faster. You're not um, uh, trying to understand how a bunch of different events are related. You're actually presented with information that helps you identify um, the, that problems are happening and what the cause is so that you can quickly solve them. Um, once you've got that in place, you, you're going to be able to free up your people to do more interesting things, right? So your s skills on your team can be put to much better use on mission critical projects. Um, and you also can begin to enable new use cases, particularly by business users. So uh, there's a growing recognition that the data that you're collecting about your uh, IT operations can be valuable beyond performance. So Historically, people collect data and information about their IT operations for a performance use case, right, in order to more quickly understand when problems are occurring and then to be able to address those problems. But it's, it's beginning to be understood that if you're able to correlate the performance of your application with important business metrics, you can better understand how the impact, how the performance of your application actually impacts the business. And in organizations that are digitally transformed and that understand how important software is to their business, this can be really valuable. Um, and, and again, it is becoming very clear that organizations are beginning to understand and the value of this data. So this was, we did a survey about um, data and analytics. So it was, a, it was a broad survey and we asked um, respondents about what types of data they most commonly were analyzing. And IT infrastructure data was the second most common data source that they cited. Um, and I think that this is, you know, this isn't specifically asking them about the business use case, but I think the fact that IT infrastructure data came up so, so high, it, it was ranked so important in this survey, really indicates the value that organizations see in IT infrastructure data and again, opens the door to new use cases. So with that, I'll invite David back. Great. Thank you, Nancy. That was, uh, that was a, a, a lot of, of information you covered, uh, but really dist distilled down to a few core thoughts, right? The first is that 
um, enterprises are going through this process by which their environments are becoming increasingly more complex. Second is that budgets are not growing to keep pace with the complexity and they're flat to maybe slightly down. And that's really driving the need for you know, reliance on automation and a focus on that. Um, that, I think, context is one that I'm certainly seeing play out across the industry. What advice do you have? I mean, we have a lot of people here who are dealing with that today uh, you know, in a real way. What advice do you have for them in terms of how they can actually start the process. Yeah, I think it, it's really good to start by measuring where you are, um, and then you can pick off the easy wins. And I think that it, it, when I talk to organizations, a lot of people don't do that. They sort of actually sometimes struggle with trying to figure out what to measure. But the interesting thing is also once they do begin to measure their own team performance and what are the tasks that they're spending a ton of time on. Sometimes they're a little bit surprised. So there are some things that maybe they didn't realize people were spending a ton of time on. Other things that are just maybe super annoying, they thought they were spending more time than they actually are. Once you figure out what you're spending a ton of time on, then you should begin to look at kind of what are the easy wins? Like what are sort of the obvious easy things that you could automate? And then I would advise people to you know, dip your toe in, start automating some simple things that you know will have a big payoff, and then measure the results. Because it's so important to sort of close that loop and understand the benefits that you're actually getting right. once you start adopting it. Yeah, that's perfect. I mean, I've certainly seen some of the best uh, uh, enterprises that are, are starting to move down this way best practices, take inventory of what people are doing exactly like you said. I've actually seen people actually associate amount of time for each action as well, uh, mm -hmm. and then start to catalog when they start to automate some of the easier, safer automations, start to catalog how much time they're really saving that can, they can reinvest in innovation. Exactly. So, yeah. th and then that gamifies the whole thing and people start to really move down the yeah, path. Yeah, true. Thank true. you so much yeah. for your time, Thank Nancy. You. Appreciate it. <laughs>